Americans are voting to elect their next president. The tiny town of Dixville Notch in New Hampshire was among the first to cast, uh, to cast their ballots in what is widely expected to be a very tight election. Uh, votes have been counted from Dixville Notch, whose uh, midnight voting tradition started in 1960. Hillary Clinton emerging the winner, gathering half of all votes, with her uh, rival Republican nominee Donald Trump coming in second with two votes. Both uh, Libertarian Gary Johnson and uh, Milt, uh, Mitt Romney got one vote each. The voting results in Dixville Notch are not predictive of the results of the general election election. Well, joining me now for the latest uh, on the U.S. elections is uh, Chelsea Markowitz, a researcher at South Africa's Institute of International Affairs. Chelsea, the voting already underway in the United States and what is uh, touted as the dirtiest and most highly contested U.S. election. What are your thoughts on the electioneering process that we've seen, uh, particularly over the last few months? Well, I don't think it necessarily presents a good example in terms of the strength of American institutions and the character of American institutions. As we've seen, a lot of this has been characterized by personal attacks rather than focusing on policies, more so than ever before. And um, especially with Trump also saying that he wouldn't necessarily accept the result of the election, this doesn't look good in terms of um, American democracy. And as you say, there's been more mudslinging than real talk of policies. And for that reason, one has to wonder what, if anything, is at stake for Africa with regards to this election. Well, I think that there are key three areas that are uh, most important for Africa. And these, I'd say, would be trade. For one, if you just look at South Africa and the U.S., trade is almost 13 million U.S. dollars in 2015. And also in terms of the large aid that the U.S. provides to the whole African continent. And lastly, I'd say in terms of the global, global issues of terrorism, this has reached all corners of the globe, including the African continent. So the way in which um, each presidential candidate would deal with this is also very important. Mm. Now, as you mentioned, the trade, aid, and terrorism will be key things to watch. What other shifts should, should we look for in uh, foreign policy or economic policy with regards to, to the U.S. Uh, and uh, Africa? For instance, the AGOA pact will need renewal uh, in a few years' time. What might we expect if Clinton is in power or perhaps if uh, Donald Trump is the president of the United States? Well, in terms of AGOA in particular, first I'd point out that it doesn't expire until 2025, so I don't think that either candidate would do anything in terms of the current agreement. However, in terms of the possibilities for negotiating a future free trade agreement, this would actually have to start now, and I think the candidates would have a different approach. Um, it certainly won't be uh, as much of a popular uh, agreement as uh, trade with China and Mexico, for example, which have been very contentious. But I think that with Trump, in terms of negotiating a future agreement, he's, he stated that he's going to be much tougher in terms of negotiating any trade agreements. So I think that it would, might be less likely to see some of South Africa's um, developmental concerns being able to be included in an agreement. And this might make it less likely that a trade agreement would be able to be negotiated at all. And I think with Clinton, I'd say she's a bit more open in terms of her flexibility and her openness to trade in general. So I think it might be easier to negotiate a favorable post-AGOA agreement under Clinton. All right, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much. Uh, Chelsea Marker is coming to us there from Johannesburg on what the U.S. elections might mean for Africa. Now, of course, uh, many around the world, including Ugandans, are keenly watching the outcome of this election. Uganda, though, as, this, uh, East, as an East African country, is a key strategic partner of the U.S. in terms of security on the African continent. Hilary Ayesega tells us more. The U.S. supports Uganda in the fight against al-Shabaab militants in Somalia and LRA rebels in the Central African Republic. But as the world's most powerful country casts a ballot on who will be its next president, there are mixed reactions on the streets of Uganda's capital, Kampala. Today, the biggest issue is really coalition against international and domestic terrorism. I don't think we have any divergence between any American administration, whether it will be Mrs. Clinton or Mr. Donald Trump. They would still need um, Uganda and Africa, for that matter, to be part of that 
coalition. What is at stake if Hillary loses is that women in leadership will be demoralized the more. This campaign has gone dirty, this campaign has gone personal, this campaign has been below the bar of the non-US elections just because the woman was the highest contender. There's a sense in which uh, a Donald Trump victory creates a feeling that there will be change in, in countries across Africa that especially have had leaders in office for long. This was mostly inspired by a tweet that came out sometime last year, which was a fake tweet. But for countries that have had these leaders, it, they've really stuck on it. And on the economic front, the United States is Uganda's largest bilateral donor. The East African nation is able to access the U.S. markets through the African Growth and Opportunity Act. And that's not all. The U.S. helps Uganda to address health threats such as malaria and HIV AIDS through the Global Health Initiative. More than 700,000 Ugandans receive life-saving antiretroviral treatment funded by the U.S. assistance. So the outcome of this election will be closely watched by many here in Uganda. Hilara Isga, CCTV, Kampala.